Hello everyone! Uh, tomorrow is the start of the London Chess Classic, uh, but before that, uh, today is something called the London Chess Classic Pro Biz Cup. Uh, it's an event uh, where 8 professional chess players are teamed up with uh, 8 amateur chess players, uh, businessmen. And uh, the event will last for 3 rounds, it's uh, rapid games will be played, uh, 20 minutes uh, for the entire game, uh, and a 5 second increment per move. And uh, after the three rounds, uh, a winner will be proclaimed. It's very interesting how the organizers uh, decided to settle things uh, if there will be a tie after three rounds. Uh, if there will be a tie after three rounds of blitz, uh, then uh, the amateurs from each team uh, will play a blitz game. And if that game ends in a draw, uh, then uh, from the two top teams, the grandmasters will play against amateurs. And uh, whichever grandmaster checkmates the amateur before the other grandmaster, uh, that team will be proclaimed the winner. So, a very interesting event, and I will tell you the results of the event uh, after I show you the game. Uh, this is the game uh, Magnus Carlsen versus Garry Kasparov. A very, a very nice uh, pairing, uh, especially since today is still uh, Carlsen's birthday. Uh, Carlsen was paired with Chris Flowers, and uh, Garry Kasparov was uh, teamed with Terry Chapman. I have no idea who these people are, obviously they are businessmen. Uh, but... Uh, well, let's see the game. Uh, and it's very... Uh, it's not always... If you ever played 2-on-2 two two chess, it's not always best to play the best move. If, uh, if your teammate is a weaker player, then you have to play a move that he will understand so he can follow you. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a very, you know... Uh, not, not gonna be easy. Neither for Carlsen, neither for Kasparov. Uh, so uh, Carlsen and uh, Mr. Flowers have the white pieces. Carlsen opens up with e4. And uh, on every board, uh, the professional chess players are playing the first move. So Carlsen opens with e4, and we have c6 by Kasparov, the Karl Khan defense. Uh, Chris plays d4, and Terry responds with the d5. Uh, we have knight to d2, the modern variation by Carlsen. Uh, but Kasparov goes straight uh, into the classic line with the d captures on e4. Uh, we have knight captures uh, on d4 by Chris, and the bishop to f5 by Terry. And here there are a lot of moves uh, possible. The most common move is knight to g3 with a tempo on the bishop. Uh, and this will be continued with something like uh, maybe bishop g6 and h4. Uh, you've seen this plenty of times already. Uh, but uh, aside from this knight to g3 move, you can either play bishop d3. You can even retreat the knight to c3. Uh, but Carlsen chose, uh, chose a very interesting approach. He played queen to f3. And I, I haven't seen queen, queen f3 ever in this variation, so very interesting. Uh, Kasparov responds with e6, uh, we have c3 by Chris and the knight to d7 by Terry. Uh, bishop to f4 by Carlsen, uh, queen to b6 by Kasparov, now eyeing that b2 pawn, uh, and bishop to d3 by Chris. It's interesting, uh, Chris didn't, uh, uh, didn't decide to defend this uh, b2 pawn. Uh, uh, he left it for capture, and also he didn't decide to go for this knight to d6 check. Uh, it does seem like it's uh, you're attacking the king with check, you're attacking the bishop on f5, uh, and it's interesting that he didn't go for this to grab this dark square bishop, uh, but this would actually favor black. If bishop captures, bishop captures, then queen captures on b2, uh, attacking the rook, and after rook to d1, uh, knight to f6, uh, this knight is coming to e4, and if you if you play a bad move with white, of course, bishop to g4 is also an idea. So we do have to block this, something like knight to e2, uh, but now bishop to c2, again attacking the rook, and after rook to c1, which is the only move, knight e4, and the white is... Uh, white, it's, uh, it's very annoying to play this position with white, it's... Pretty much you can't move any piece, you can't uh, move the knight, uh, you're gonna lose the rook, uh, you can't develop the bishop, you can't castle, uh, your bishop on d6 is attacked, so I don't know if uh, I don't know if uh, Chris uh, knew this, but uh, nevertheless, after queen b6 he played bishop to d3. Uh, we have bishop captures on e4 now, and also an interesting move by Terry. Uh, if he decided to go for something like queen captures on b2 now, uh, then after rook to b1, uh, bishop captures on e4, and now bishop captures on e4, so the queen is protecting the c3 pawn, and the bishop is protecting the rook on b1. Uh, queen captures on a2, and now after rook captures on b7, uh, sure, black is up a piece, but uh, white has tremendous development, and uh, white, white is definitely better here. 
but okay, it seems like both Chris and Terry are, are no amateurs here. Uh, after bishop to d3, Terry responded with bishop captures on e4. Uh, we have bishop captures on e4 and knight g to f6. Uh, knight to e2 uh, and now knight captures on e4 by Terry. Carlson recaptures, uh, queen captures on e4 and we have bishop to e7. Uh, Chris castles, Terry castles, and the queen to c2 by Carlson. Now Carlson wants to defend this pawn. Uh, you know, when you're when you're playing a, a two-on-two -two chess, you, you you don't want to be down a pawn. Uh, you don't know if your colleague will be able to use all this activity. Uh, so rook f to e8 by Kasparov. Now rook f to e1 by Chris. Uh, c5 by Terry and rook a to d1 by Carlson. Uh, rook a to d8 by Kasparov, and now d5. <clears throat> uh, we have e captures on d5, uh, rook captures on d5, and queen to e6. Uh, Kasparov attacks the rook on d5. Uh, we have rook e to d1 by Chris. Now Chris doubles up on the d-file, and uh, knight to f6 now. <clears throat> uh, with a tempo on the rook, also offering an exchange of rooks here. Uh, we have rook captures on d8 by Carlsen and the bishop captures on d8 by Kasparov. Uh, rook captures on d8 was also an option. Uh, and uh, here we have a move uh, knight to g3. And this is a very interesting move that Chris made. Uh, as the rook and the queen are attacking the knight. This might be why Kasparov played bishop captures on d8. And uh, Chris was uh, worried about this, you know. Uh, your knight is attacked, if you move the knight you get queen to e1 and this leads to checkmate. Uh, so he played knight to g3. Now queen e1 doesn't work, okay, knight to f1 is still a defensive resource. Uh, but uh, here's what Chris missed. Uh, queen e6 is attacking the knight on e2, <clears throat> but also is attacking the a2 pawn. And here Chris missed that he had this c4 move. Uh, now, uh, now you're blocking the queen's attack to the a2 pawn. And uh, the thing is, uh, the queen can't capture the knight. If queen captures knight on e2, then simply queen captures queen. Uh, and if you capture the queen, bishop, uh, rook captures bishop on d8. Uh, you retreat with the rook, uh, you exchange rooks, knight captures on e8. And now uh, bishop to b8, uh, both the a7 pawn and the c5 pawn are on a dark square. And after a couple of more defensive moves, bishop a7 going for the c5 pawn. A knight d6 attacking the c4 pawn, b3 defending, and after knight to e4 defending the c5 pawn, the king comes into the game, uh, and after f6, king e1, and something like f3, uh, you're kicking away the knight from the defense of the c5 pawn. Uh, okay, this does seem like it's a lot of moves, but uh, it's not something you have to calculate. Uh, this is this is known. So, okay, after bishop, bishop captures on d8, knight to g3, uh, Chris missed the c4 idea, uh, and now we have uh, queen captures on a2 by Terry. And uh, I'm sure Kasparov was uh, very happy to see this, that uh, Terry grabbed the pawn and now they are a pawn up and uh, in a better position. Uh, knight to f5 by Carlsen and Kasparov retreats, uh, queen to e6. Uh, we have h3 by Chris, making some breathing room for the king, a good decision. Uh, knight to e4 by Terry uh, and now queen to a4 by Carlsen. Uh, a sneaky move, Carlsen is still uh, trying to, to do something, uh, he's attacking the a7 pawn, uh, also uh, eyeing that rook on e8, so queen captures knight on f5 isn't possible because of uh, queen captures rook on e8 checkmate. Uh, so Kasparov plays bishop to b6 now, he decides to defend the a7 pawn. Uh, queen to d7 now by Chris, offering an exchange of queens, uh, and now a, a powerful move by Terry. Uh, Terry plays c4. And uh, it's, a, it's a great decision, it locks down this b2 pawn on b2, uh, it can go forward and also it opens up the attack from this bishop uh, to the f2 pawn as the knight is attacking it as well. So a very nice decision. Uh, bishop to e3 by Carlsen and knight to c5 by Kasparov. Uh, queen captures now on e6 by Chris, uh, f captures on e6. Uh, with a tempo on the knight, uh, we have bishop captures on c5 by Carlsen, bishop captures by Kasparov, uh, and uh, this is, okay, it's a, it's a better position for black, uh, black is up a pawn and he does have a bishop against a knight, uh, probably also uh, he has three pawns uh, to two pawns uh, on the queen side, uh, all in all, 
a better position for black, definitely. Uh, but it's still playable for white. White white can still you know uh, try to try to get something out of the position. Uh, but unfortunately, in this position, uh, Chris blunders the game away for him and for Carlson. He plays knight to d6. Uh, attacking the rook on e8, also the pawn on c4, hoping to win a pawn, uh, and if not, at least uh, exchange a knight for a bishop, and uh, a rook ending being a pawn up isn't that bad, actually. Uh, but, unfortunately, he missed uh, this move, and Terry finds it, of course, Terry plays rook to d8, and uh, in this position, uh, both Carlson and uh, Chris Flowers resigned the game. As uh, there is no defense uh, from rook captures knight, if you move the knight you get rook captures rook on d1. So you lose a piece at least. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, you know, I, I was very happy to see that uh, Carlson got to play Garry Kasparov. Uh, although, you know, he did lose against him on his birthday, but uh, what are you gonna do? Uh, and uh, one other interesting thing, uh, uh, all, all the teams had like two timeouts. Uh, you could you could call two timeouts uh, lasting one minute, and you could you know uh, talk uh, about the position with your colleague and uh, explain some things to him. So yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, how how'd you like it? And uh, I'm interested. Uh, what do you think? Uh, who is the better player here, uh, Chris Flowers or Terry Chapman? I, I'm kind of going with Terry because he did uh, choose a couple of pretty good moves during the game. Uh, as usual, you can check all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon.